this is the Fearless Agent Podcast, where you learn how to make way more money fast selling real estate with your host, the fearless agent himself, Bob Leffler. Well, good day to you. This is the ever popular Bob Leffler here at the Fearless Agent Podcast for real estate sales professionals like you, where we explain that everything Everything you've been taught by the real estate industry is wrong, and you will make lots more money in way less time by doing the exact opposite. I think we'd be, be joined by a caller today by the name of Charles, and uh, today's topic I just want to start with is the se- one of the secrets to sales success, and that is that selling is not telling. So uh, I don't know how many of you have ever read the book Spin Selling. Uh, But it is the best book ever written on sales. There will never be a better book on sales. Uh, It's thin. It's easy to read. Um, But it was based on an 11-year-long research study on sales where they analyzed 35,000 sales presentations. And two things came out of it. One is that the uh, results never changed, so it was scientific. And number two is that it was the exact opposite. The results showed that it was the exact opposite of what we have been taught for the last hundred years in sales. So for the last hundred years in the sales industry, we have been taught that you do a bunch of rapport building, then you uh, show the features, but you actually sell the benefits and then you overcome the objections. And I don't care how you dress it up and rename everything and all these different sales programs in and out of real estate. That's the way it's always done. So the interesting thing in the uh, research is that there was this tiny group of very, very successful salespeople, but they were doing something different and they were having way, way better success than all the others. So. Uh, In one of the upcoming weeks of the podcast, I will share with you what those secrets were. Now, oh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm going to tell you what the secrets are right now. So what they were doing is no rapport building, and they scientifically proved that the more rapport building that you do, the less likely you are to make the sale. They were doing no features, no benefits, no 51-point marketing program or something like that. They were making no promises, and because of that, they never had to overcome any objections. So if you think about it, let's say you're on a listing presentation, and you're not going to do any uh, uh, rapport building. You're not going to do any, you know, features, no benefits, no promises. Uh, What in the world are you going to do? Well, what you do is you ask a series of questions that are designed a certain way. Now, I'm the only person that's ever adapted this spin selling model to real estate and it was not that easy to do but it actually turns out to be much more powerful in real estate because we have a little secret weapon that the other uh, industries don't have by the way the most famous sales training in the world and for being the best is xerox xerox uses spin selling and in an upcoming episode of the uh, podcast, I'm going to have a guest on who is not in the real estate industry, but she teaches spin selling for another industry, and uh, we'll have a little chance to pick her brain on how that works too. So again, selling is not telling. So you're going to ask a series of questions in the, built into the Fearless Agent listing presentation in all the presentations. What you do is you ask this series of questions, and it's designed to have the the seller, in the case of a listing presentation, to sell you on why they should not do business with your competitor. They end up selling you on why they should list their house with you. They end up selling you on why they should price their house correctly. And when you have the seller selling you on you, you've arrived. So that's the uh, that's the goal of every fearless agent listing presentation. So if, you, if you're a fearless agent coaching student, you're going to be able to walk up to a stranger's house, uh, know that you're going to get the listing if anybody is able to get it. You're going to know that you're going to get it at full commission, which is a number that uh, rhymes with heaven and is not 11%. You're going to keep four. You're going to get 
a one-year listing and you're going to get the seller to beg you to underprice their house. It's going to sell for way more than it's worth and you're going to get a steady stream of uh, referrals from your very satisfied seller. So that's the goal. So that's the goal of the fearless agent listing presentation and pricing presentation. So the, the, the thing to really keep in mind is that that whole rapport building stuff. Now, are you going to build rapport? Is that just going to happen naturally? Of course. And, and the proof that rapport building does not work is this. And I'm sure this has happened to you. It's happened to me many times. But I have listed uh, properties where uh, I was a total stranger to the seller. And they had a very close friend of theirs who was a real estate agent. So, you know, I probably got a hold of them by cold calling. Uh, they said, oh, we have a friend. And I say, hey, can I ask you about that? And they said, yeah. I say, well, um, if you knew absolutely for certain that by doing business with me, two things would happen. One is that your house would actually sell. And number two is you would end up with tens of thousands of extra dollars more than you could get any other way with or without your friend. Would you be interested in hearing about that or are you allergic to money? And then they always said, what friend? No, we don't have a friend, right? So then I would go on the listing presentation. I'd come out with it listed for one year at full commission, under underpriced on day one. So we got multiple offers immediately. And uh, so here's the question. Who had more rapport with those sellers, their friend of many years, or me. Yeah, I didn't have a bunch of rapport with them. They just met me that night. They did business with me because they didn't have a bunch of rapport with them. They respected me more because they knew me less. So you doing a bunch of rapport building and talking about things that are off topic are not going to help your cause. And by the way, we have a caller. It's, uh, are you Charles? Are you on the line? I'm on the line. Thank hey, you very Charles, much. Hey, Charles. How are you doing? This is the lovely Charles Hill from Nashville, Tennessee, realtor, <laughs> world-famous realtor and fearless agent coaching student. And uh, so how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Now, I was listening to what you were saying there. Yeah. Uh, t- t- tell, tell, the, tell the kids out there in uh, Radio Land your opinion on that. Okay. So without telling my story, I'll just tell you my opinion there. I, I had spent um, the whole first 10 months of my real estate, my realtor career, um, calling expired and Fizbo's using the free uh, video scripts that I got off of YouTube and, and Bob's website, fearlessagent.com and all. And I'll tell that you- That was a I shameless plug, of, in case you missed it, folks. Yeah, it, it was. It was. But, but to be honest, here's the thing. I am not from Nashville, and I am also not the kind of salesperson to want to do the rapport building. So what I hadn't heard until after joining the coaching, though, was these comments he just made about people who had a friend. And when I thought about it, like what he was just saying there, every listing I took, they all had a friend. It was, you know, an expired new and agent, obviously. A FISBO had a friend that was an agent. And I did none of the rapport building stuff over the phone. And I was successful just using the free material that I got. Mm-hmm. Um, and it never dawned on me that because I wasn't building rapport that they respected me more until he said it recently. So. And where were you so from you prior to Nashville? Southern California. So you moved to Nashville. You know nobody, so you have no sphere of influence to really tap into there. Um, right. What was your experience after you did sign up for the coaching? How did that impact you? Well, if I can, could I rewind just sure, a tiny bit? Sure, of course. Okay. So Then I'll drink I, I coffee, done, by the way. This episode brought to you by Folgers. <laughs> I had some uh, right before I started talking, so Lovely. perfect. Um, I had done sales in different industries over time, and as a matter of fact, I was a loan officer partnered with a brokerage, a real estate brokerage, and a team in specific, wasting money on internet marketing. Nonetheless, that aside, what I did notice was that all the sales training that I saw those agents receiving was practically contributing to their failure rates. And so while I was going through my listing or my uh, licensing process, I had you know, been hunting for something different. And it was a huge sigh of relief when I ran across the fearless agent material. Uh, at the time, I couldn't afford coaching. So I transcribed those videos that I found online and I started using the scripts religiously and didn't change anything about them. Like you said, didn't, n- no rapport stuff, none of that. Uh, but yeah, just using those phone scripts and tips I found in the videos, I was able to list 
over 30 houses. Uh, and that was before I was a fearless agent, just using the free material. Um, so the funny thing about that, Bob, is I would use the magic questions and, and, and say that I did things completely differently. And then I'd show up and do the same crap that everybody else was doing, unfortunately. They uh, fell for that. But, oh, my goodness. However, however, like you've been saying lately, and I, again, another uh, you know epiphany for me. Uh, was He's using that, big uh, words now, epiphany. It's my, okay. my ability to go was what made the difference. And the, the phone scripts gave me that ability to go. And even though I didn't really have a great presentation at the time, I was able to, to list over 30. Um, but since joining, you know, I've, what I've realized is, you know, it's added more value to my situation in the last two months, you know, than I ever imagined it would. And actually having a professional presentation and unbeatable strategy has 100% seriously had, had me or caused me to uh, take eight listings in the last two months, you know, doing it this way. And uh, it was a lot easier, and my time's managed a little better. I've still got things to improve, but um, that's my story. And he's sticking to it. Now, one of the things I want uh, you who are listening to notice about Charles is he just comes across as a nice guy that you would trust. Uh, By the way, if you'd like to send a referral to Charles in Nashville, Tennessee, Uh, You can call him uh, at 615-586-2662. That's toll-free, day or night, ladies and gentlemen. Um, And he would be happy to – and he will do a great job. So, you know, when I I first talked to Charles before he signed up, I I always have a conversation with somebody on the phone and I – and I think, would I list my house with this person? You know, not not based on their skills, but just you know how they come across. Uh, so Charles is a nice guy. He he sounds honest. You know, he comes across as that guy you would trust, and he has really no bad phone habits. So uh, one of the one of the th- which is a big which is a big. Um, uh, benefit to me in my coaching Charles because we don't have to overcome that stuff. So the number one bad phone habit that, that my coaching students have is they talk way too fast. So um, I was watching uh, Jay Leno has this car show on TV. I don't know if you have you ever seen that show, Charles? Charles? Um, yes. Yes, I have. <laughs> Charles yeah, dozed uh, off Jay, in the Jay, middle sorry. of the podcast. That's fine. No, no. Hey, one, one thing about me is you know, the different things you have to focus on when you're on the phone. I'm a heavy mouth breather, so I muted myself there so I didn't uh, make <laughs> people think I was outside. Uh, so if you hear heavy breathing, it's just Charles. He's fine. It's uh, Yeah, so I – and by the way, one way I can slow down my talking is if I remember to breathe in between, and mm-hmm. it makes it, <laughs> it makes me sound better. Uh, but anyway, Jay Leno's Garage is what you're talking yes, about, That's right. Great show. I love it, and it's, it's super funny. But he was talking to one of the comedians on the show about how – when a new comedian would come on to The Tonight Show for their very first time on The Tonight Show, they'd be extremely nervous, of course. And he'd say, back in the green room, he'd say, now when you go out there on stage, he goes, if you ever think you're talking too slow, slow down. In other words, there's no way you could ever talk too slow. So that's a, that's a always great advice. When you are doing telephone prospecting, a lot of you use Mojo or a three-line dialer or something like that, and that can tend to amp you up. But the reality is when a telemarketer calls you and they're trying to sell you something and they talk really fast, you always interrupt them and you say, hey, 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 hang on a second. I know I'm not interested in that, but you know, thanks for calling. If, if they talk slow, you're much less apt to interrupt them. So you won't get people interrupting you if you talk slower, but always a good. And, you know, there's an old saying, fast-talking salesperson, which, by the way, is not a compliment. So you would you just want to take it nice and slow. And we are in the financial uh, services industry, so you want to sound calm and level-headed and like you're a nice guy. So when you are on the, um, uh, on the appointment – and I know Charles is very good at this, you know, it's all about the customer. So if you're never going to lose a listing if you care more about the customer than any other agent they talk to ever will, and they know that. You're never going to lose a listing when the customer understands you care more about their money and protecting their money and getting their more, more money for their house than any other agent ever will. 
they will throw their friends and their past realtor overboard to do business with you if you care more about them than anybody else will. And and by the way, uh, if any of, of what we're talking about on, on the podcast makes sense to you and you're earning less selling real estate than you wish you were and you're open to the idea of having some help, if you would ever like to learn more, you can always, any, any of you listening, you can always call me anytime at 480-385-8810. That is my cell phone. Charles, I do a pretty good job of answering your calls when you, when you call. Isn't that right? You do. And then, uh, and let's just see if, you know, you and what you're trying to do and what we do, if it would even be a good fit. So again, it's 480-385-8810. Call me anytime. I love talking to realtors. Never think that you're bothering me. I don't have anything better to do than to make you rich. So I want you to call me. Please don't email to me. Don't text. Always call me. And if you can't afford coaching, like, uh, you know, Charles' story, he, you know, but you wish you could, please visit fearlessagent.com like he did. Watch the free webinar. It's about 45 minutes. Take lots of notes. Go to the video training page. And here's my guarantee to you. Those free videos will be much better coaching for free than you would pay any other coach in America any amount of money for. And if you ever have a question, again, you can always call me because we want to help you for free so that you can end up like Charles did, being able to afford our coaching as soon as possible. So we are here for you. Now, Charles, do you, you, I think you had a question. Uh, what, was your, what was your question you wanted to ask? I've got um, – I told you a different one mm-hmm. before we talked. Can I tell you We can do one more than one. We're killing time We can do here. more than one? Yeah, sure. Of course. Here's a technical one that was interesting. Um, you had described and defined the word contingent in a way that I had never heard anyone say it before. Mm-hmm. And I was hoping that you might be able to at least repeat that because um, it was really important, I thought. Well, when you're, let's say you're representing the seller, you're a listing agent, and an offer comes in, it could be contingent on the loan. They usually are contingent upon a loan. Uh, it could be contingent upon an appraisal valuation. It could be contingent upon the sale of a house. Um, and there could be others. I can't think of any. In li- Charles, can you think of any that I forgot? Usually it's the loan, uh, the appraisal, and the sale of the house. Inspection. I guess the uh, inspection, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. So after the inspection period is over, uh, what I always did to protect my seller is I, I had every every sale had non-refundable earnest earnest deposit. Now, if you do business with an FHA or VA buyer, uh, you cannot have non-refundable earnest money. In fact, the earnest money in those sales is a fairy tale. I don't even know why they have earnest money on FHA and VA because they're always going to get it back if they don't qualify for the loan. So think about it. If, if the earnest deposit is to protect the seller from the buyer defaulting, how is not qualifying for the loan not defaulting? I mean, that's what it, that's what it was for. And back when I got into real estate, this is in, uh, I'm so old, I started with a company called Century 19, that tells you something, but they used to, on conventional loans, the, the earnest deposit was always non-refundable for any reason. So um, you can remove the contingency by having some language in there that we teach you how to do. But if the word contingent means the, nothing more than the buyer gets their money back if their earnest deposit, okay? So let's say you ha- it's contingent upon – let's say it's a cash offer and it's contingent upon the sale of a house, which is not uncommon. So if I have non-refundable earnest deposit of, let's say, $10,000 um, – if they don't sell their house and buy my listing, they lose the $10,000, then it is not contingent upon the sale of their house. They still would have to sell their house to go through with the transaction, but it no longer is contingent upon my sale. So every sale is contingent upon the buyer not dying before close of escrow, realistically. So anything could go bad, but the seller needs to be protected in some way, if they choose to, you know, that's an, that's optional. But I, I sold all of my listings as is, meaning that 
after the inspection period, if you didn't back out, you were totally in and you're buying it as is and everything that's broken will be broken at close of escrow and everything that was working will be working at closing and uh, everyone had non-refundable earnest deposit. And if you're going to have non-refundable earnest money on a on a uh, listing, um, we name a listing that you've got, Charles, the price. Okay, 119. Okay, so uh, Charles is working the hood. That's all I'm saying. But so it's 119. What is your yeah. average sales price for your Nashville? Is uh, more expensive it, than that. It's 303. That's okay. a, that's a true example where I, I have 10,000 non-refundable earnest yeah. money on it. So I, that's why I'm bringing that. So here's up. here's what I would recommend to you: if if you get an offer and it doesn't have you know non-refundable earnest deposit and it is contingent, you could remove that. But you want the earnest deposit to be enough that the seller is compensated if the buyer were to back out this again this is after the inspection period has expired and not so much that it would scare the buyer away from the deal okay so a, a good rule of thumb is one percent of the sales price rounded up uh, to the nearest thousand let's say per 30 days that I'm going to be taking taking my listing off the market so on that 119, so that's 120, so that would be uh, $1,200 if I rounded up that to 2000 In that price range, $2,000 uh, would compensate my seller for taking their house off the market for, and if it was, you know, 45-day closing, then maybe $3,000. Uh, the three, $303,000 or the $300,000 price range, you know, Three or four thousand uh, dollars non-refundable earnest deposit would be good. So, so that way your seller is protected. What if I'm what if I'm representing the buyer, or what if I am the buyer? Now I bought a house um, that I had multiple offers. I was the winning bidder. Okay, so I said to the seller, uh, the seller's agent, I said, "Look, I'll pay whatever you tell me to pay." Okay. You've got multiple offers. I want you to know I'm going to be living in that house. I was not going to be explaining to my wife five years later why we're not living in her favorite house when I am a realtor, for goodness sakes. So I said, you tell me what to pay and I'll pay it. And I'm going to buy it as is. I'm not going to ask for any repairs. Uh, and I'm not going to have a home inspection. And I'm not going to – and I'm going to give you non-refundable earnest um, – money in any amount you ask for. So you tell me what to pay, I'll pay it. And I ended up being the winning bidder and I am happy to be living in that house. Now, I overpaid for my house because I did that. Uh, but I will tell you, I am happy. So so 10 years later, when my house has doubled in value, am I going to really care that I overpaid by, you know, 2%, 5%? No, of course not. And, and, uh, and I got to win because, you know, they knew I was serious. So when you represent the buyer, the way to win in a multiple offer situation, and that's very common when you're buying your favorite house, you know, your favorite house is everybody's favorite house. So by removing those contingencies and not being FHA or VA and uh, and doing that kind of stuff, you can, you can get to win in your favorite house. So the way I look at it is this. If we're going to be fair, okay, to everybody – which is important. When I'm a seller, I want the buyer to grossly overpay for my house so that I end up with way more money than I ever could get any other way. I'd have to list it with Charles Hill or some other fearless agent for that to happen or it would never happen. Uh, and I want the world's best buyer. But when I'm, the, when I'm the buyer, getting a good deal is out of the question. I don't want to get a good deal. I want to get the best house, the best house of all the houses that are available to me for the amount of money my go I've got, and I'm happy to overpay for it uh, to get it. So that's fair. So I'm only going to work with buyers who are like that, and I'm and every seller uh, would agree. I, I don't think Charles, you've had too many sellers that said, "Hey, the most important thing to me is that the buyer gets a really good deal on my house." Do you ever hear anybody say that? No, never heard yeah. that before. So when you when you go into a listing presentation and you're doing the fearless agent listing presentation, pricing presentation, perhaps the for sale by owner presentation, 
and they understand that you care about what they care about. You care more about them than any other agent ever will. Uh, they understand that you care more about their money than they do even. Uh, doesn't that take away all the competition for you? Does it make your life easy? Yes. <laughs> it definitely makes my life easy. Yeah. G- give me a, some other observations that you've noticed when you go on listing presentations as a fearless agent that are different than the way it used to be. Uh, okay. Well, period for sure is that um, – most all that the other people are doing. My my brokerage is actually number one in our county and, and number one in the state too, and everything that they're trained on and everything that they're presenting to people is all marketing. And I used to have to compete in those conversations, and I used to make the mistakes about you know handling certain objections, or whatever certain certain things that people said. But it was always competing on marketing: how many websites, how many this, how many that. Um, and the, the biggest difference that I found is that. Uh, we're actually, we're not talking about marketing whatsoever. And I appreciate that because I know firsthand that there's the the likelihood of a sale coming from a, you know, some website is, uh, you know, nil basically. Um, and so that they definitely realize that we're completely different that way. And having a process, a process peer, you know, first off it is completely different because most people don't have a process at all. And if they do, they just blabber too much about marketing and, uh, people catch on real quick that by being honest with them that we do care more about them for example and then uh those are some of the things that i've noticed are completely different yeah i noticed i was able to go on listing presentations and never ever really have any competition because what i was doing was completely different so if you have a choice like if 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 you're an agent and you're competing on the same listing that i am and i have a choice of being a little bit better than you or promising a little bit more stuff than you, or being completely different than you, I'm going to pick completely different every time. So all agents are the same is the perception of every seller out there. So if all agents are the same, which one are you going to pick? Well, you're going to pick the cheapest one. So if you're going to charge an amount that is full commission, which again rhymes with uh, heaven and is not 11 percent, you're going to be half, you're going to have to be completely different. And that is not going to be hard uh, because all the other agents are trained the same way by the industry. They're all doing the same thing. So uh, and th- I know that was my experience and and that worked out great. And I know that is Charles's experience, too. So, uh, Charles, I want to thank you for joining us and and, uh, if, and again, if anybody is sending a referral to Nashville, Tennessee, call Charles. Uh, hit him up at 615-586-2662. And once again, we want to thank uh, you for joining us today. Please do visit us at fearlessagent.com. You can call me directly at 480-385-8810. By the way, if you enjoyed this podcast, uh, please give us a rating. You know, give us the five-star rating. Uh, if you didn't enjoy it, you can call me and t- complain directly, and I'll uh, I'll fix it for you. Uh, but please do give us a review of this podcast on iTunes. You can also visit us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. You can visit Charles in Nashville, Tennessee. You can see me at Starbucks around the corner. We're always around. And until next week, I want you to do what all fearless agents do. Have fun, be humble, and most of all, be fearless. Thanks. Oh, oh.